when it comes to the ultra processed foods, what's in them, how they affect us outside of the palatability and the calorie density, what else is going on that seems to be evidence-based that's something that we should be concerned about? Yeah, well, I think that part of it, part of it is that people are consuming more of it of it because they're not satiated, right? They're, it's disrupting the hormones, which I mentioned. So that is the one thing to consider. Is that you the actually, biggest mover in all of this? Um, for think? weight gain, I would say it is because like weight gain really is comes down to like eating eating more calories Tyco. and right calories in calories out makes makes a big difference. Um, but there's other factors at play here that I think really come down to the added sugar, right? So added sugar affects so many different things in the body, um, everything from, you know, hormone production to cognition. So hormones, testosterone, I know you're interested in testosterone. There was a pretty classic study that was done that showed that um, men, and it, this was a huge age range, and you know we're talking young men that were like 17, all the way up to like older adults. So young adults, middle-aged adults, older adults, if they consumed 75 grams of added sugar, so that would be like a medium-sized donut and the Coke. Okay. Like, not out of this, like people do that all the time. 75 grams sounds like so much, but when you put it in terms of a donut and a Coke, it's That's not, it. Yeah. It's not, right. There's there's a lot of Americans eating a standard American diet and eating donuts with Coke or donuts with coffee and a bunch of added sugar in their coffee, right? So it, it actually is something that I would say is pretty practical mm -hmm. in terms of what people are consuming. Mm -hmm. And we, we can actually talk about what people are consuming in terms of added sugar, but 75 grams of added sugar. And um, this caused a 25% decrease in their circulating testosterone within a two-hour range. So it's obviously transient. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, 25% less, that's significant. So if you're chipping away at that grazing throughout the day. day. Yeah. Exactly. And imagine if people are eating, I mean, if that's, if their whole diet is nothing but ultra-processed foods, right? So you're talking, you know, in that study with Kevin Hall, they actually calculated how much it costs to have the whole foods diet versus the ultra-processed food diet. And it was $45 more um, a week for the ultra sorry the whole foods diet mm -hmm. so that that's significant it adds up over like mm -hmm. a month mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we're talking about 180 dollars a month it's expensive that's, to be healthy for a lot of people that makes a difference and so it's like economically your people are economically incentivized to eat ultra processed foods because they're cheaper there's also this is cali means this whole thing uh, and vani hari's as well about um whatever the food stamp system is called Oh, right. Um, SNAP? Yes, SNAP. The, yes. Uh, the sorts of foods that tend to be available on SNAP, right. trying to eat in a more healthy manner on that is very difficult, or right. more difficult. So what you mentioned there about what are Americans eating, typically what, what are they putting in their bodies? I mean, it's, it's ultra-processed foods. So, so the re the refined sugar or I'm, I'm calling it refined sugar it's really added sugar also it's, it's kind of interchangeably but you know ultimately people are eating 13 percent of their daily caloric intake is coming from added sugar that's a lot if you 2000 calorie a day if you just consider that like on average that's a lot of coming from sugar in fact um guidelines so the the guidelines for like the strictest guidelines suggest no more than five percent of your total um, daily caloric intake coming from added sugar. So that would be like no more than 25 grams a day, 5%. People are eating 13% of their total calorie intake from added sugar. So added sugar is also affecting, probably what's happening also is there's there's an, there's a mechanism there. It's hyper palatable. It tastes good. You know, people want things that taste good, but there's an addictive aspect there as well. And that's that's been shown in certainly a lot of animal studies, but also some human data as well. So there's been studies showing that if if people eat added sugar, it activates dopamine reward pathways in the brain, in the striatum, more than like eating fat, for example. So there was a study that compared fat versus added sugar. And so it's activating these dopamine reward pathways. Animal studies have found that it's activating dopamine re reward pathways um, much like addictive drugs do, but to a much milder degree, of course. So what I'm what I'm saying is that you can have addictive drugs like cocaine, methamphetamine, nicotine will will activate these dopamine reward pathways in parts of the brain. Sugar activates them too to a much milder degree, of course. 
But, you know, in animal studies, they'll they'll keep going back for the sugar like this addictive thing, right? Yep. Now, again, you got to take the animal studies with a grain of salt because we are not rodents. But there is human evidence that these pathways are being activated in our brain with um, added sugar. And there's also evidence that if you look at people that are obese, you know, the obesogenic diet is largely consists of a lot of added sugar. Well, um, people that are obese have a lower density of dopamine 2 receptors, D2 receptors, um, really indicative of something called tolerance. So what happens if you keep activating the dopamine reward pathway is that your body, as an uh, adaptive response, a feedback to it, goes, Habituates. oh, I don't need so many dopamine receptors because I had a lot of that signal coming in, right? Um, but what ends up happening is when you have fewer of those receptors, then the little bit of dopamine that you have, you're not feeling it as much. It's you need more and more, right? And so, you know, you kind of connect the dots here. And I would say certainly we need more evidence in the human arena on the, you know, potential addictive properties of added sugar. Um, however, what we do have is a lot of animal evidence and, you know, some human evidence. And I think that it really indicates that there is it's affecting reward pathways. It's affecting our dopamine system. And that's, you know, unhealthy. 